guys, DM Cubing, and today we're going to magnetize a 5x5 five five speed cube. Hey guys, I've had a lot of requests for a 5x5 five five tutorial, and here it is. Uh, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so instead of kind of bogging it down at the beginning, showing introductions and what's needed and all this, I will present that information as we move along. First, a big thanks to KS Cuber, who's going to help me by doing the demo solves. There are basically two types of polar arrangements which we can choose from for the 5x5. Five five. One is an interconnected polar arrangement which utilizes three cubic pieces, the edge, a wing, and a corner piece. While it's an effective layout, it necessitates the positioning and gluing of two magnets in the same piece, and that can be a real challenge and it really presents too many difficulties. The other arrangement presents a better option and it results in the magnets being more evenly spaced throughout the cube and it doesn't necessitate putting two magnets in one piece. Here we're utilizing four QB pieces, two wings, an edge, and a corner piece. As for the magnetic strength, a lot of people use either an N35 or N38 4 by one5 for the Wu Shuang. And for other 5 by 5s a lot of people like to use a little heavier of a magnet, a little stronger of a magnet on the inner layer of the cube and use the lighter magnet on the outer layer. So say for instance an N35 4 by 2 on the inner layer and an N35 or N38 4 by one5 on the outer layer. For my project, I'm using an M38 4x1.5 that I got at gossboys.com. You can save a lot of time and hassle if you tape down the inner 3x3 of the 5x5 cube prior to disassembling. It will be so much easier to reassemble the cube when it's like this. The QB pieces are easily disassembled by pulling them apart. You may need to work a fingernail in between a few pieces, but they really disassemble very easily. Here I grouped everything that we'll be gluing, the corner pieces, the edges, and the wings. But for right now, you might want to put the corner piece thirds and the edge halves aside because we're going to be working with the wings first. We have at least two techniques for gluing in magnets. We have the helper magnet technique and the master magnet technique. First, I'll cover the helper magnet technique. We'll start by magnetizing the wings. When we're finished, our glued in magnet will be assisted by placing an outside magnet to hold it into place while the glue dries. The position for the magnets will be identical for both halves of the wings. The adhesive I like to use is Gorilla Brand Impact Tough Formula Super Glue. It's a little bit thicker and slower drying than other super glues, but it allows me time to position the magnet into its proper location. And I like to use a little wooden stick to apply each drop of glue to the QB piece and to the magnets. Okay guys, let's magnetize. We'll start with the wing half that has the notch on the right side. I'll place a drop of glue where the magnet's going to be. You see that I've marked my stick of magnets with a piece of paper on one end, and I'll remove each magnet that we're gluing from the opposite end. And it slides right into position, and you slide it right down on that little post and make sure it's kind of snugged in. And then I'll put an additional drop of glue to kind of seal that in. I'll pull the stick off, and I'll leave a little helper magnet on the side. And I'll sit this all by itself on a flat surface, and then I'll do the remaining 23. After we're finished, we'll have 24 freshly glued wing halves. Next, we'll do the wing halves that have the notch on the left side. Now, you'll notice that the polarity and the position of the magnets is identical for both halves of the wings. We start out by placing a drop of glue where the magnet goes. We slide it into place, kind of tuck it down right at the bottom of that post. Add an additional drop of glue to the outside of the magnet. We pull the stick of magnets away, and then we leave a helper magnet. Here you see everything's glued in the position of the magnet. We set that aside on a flat surface, and we have 23 more, and then we'll end up with 24 freshly glued wing halves. Now let's glue the edge piece magnets. Here we're going to match up the half of the wing that has the notch on the right with the edge piece. So for each edge piece, we'll kind of team up with one half of the wing that has the notch on the right. We add a drop of glue to the left interior wall of the edge piece. We'll pull off the helper magnet. We'll align the fronts of both cubic pieces together, 
drop the magnet, it goes right into position. We'll add an additional drop of glue to that freshly glued in magnet, and then that's it. We'll continue to do this for the remaining 23 edge piece halves and we'll end up with 24 pairs, half of a wing, half of an edge piece. Finally, we'll match up the corner piece thirds with the wing half that has the notch on the left side. We place a drop of glue on the left interior wall of the QB piece third. And we'll remove our helper magnet and we'll align the fronts of both QB piece parts here. And then we drop the magnet in position. It, it clicks right into place. Make sure everything's nice and squared. And then we'll add an additional drop of glue to that freshly glued in magnet. We'll continue to do the same procedure for the next 23 corner piece thirds. Now we're finished with all of the gluing and I'm going to let this sit overnight before I reassemble. This glue takes a while to dry. But first I wanted to tell you about a different technique of magnetizing. Earlier I mentioned the master magnet technique. Now briefly what this is, is we're setting up two master pieces. Master pieces like a painting. No, these are QB pieces and what they do, they serve as a template for positioning and aligning and gluing in the remaining magnets in all the other QB pieces. So in our 5x5 five five, we're using two wing halves to serve as a template and a pattern to position all the corner piece magnets and all the edge piece magnets. Then you work your way back up so after you've done all your corner piece thirds and your edge piece halves, you use some of those to position and glue all the magnets of both halves of the wings. I don't generally use this technique because I like using the helper magnet technique. This allows me to use a variety of adhesives, epoxy, polyurethane type glue where after gluing the magnet there might be a, a chance that the magnet will shift. But I thought I'd present this because a lot of people ask me about this. Now that everything's set overnight, the glue's completely dry. It's time to reassemble the cube. We start by reassembling each little cubey piece. You might find it helpful if you kind of group all the individual parts that are similar together. Here's a chart I put together that shows the color combinations of the wings and the edges in the corner pieces. Now we can think of the wings, the two wings and the edges, the right wing and the left wing and the edge as one unit and that one unit has the same color combination. So as you see the chart here, we have blue and orange, blue and white, blue and red, blue and yellow, etc. Now on the corner colors, I've listed them in clockwise order. So blue, orange, yellow, blue, white, orange, etc. This is the color of the QB piece thirds, the way that they go around the post. Now when matching up the two wings of the same color combination with the edge piece of the same color combination, it helps if you think of this as one cohesive unit. It's one unit, so just think of the three, the little trio, as an edge piece. So here you see an edge piece, you see it's matching left wing of the same color combination, and you see it's matching right wing of the same color combination. They come together and they form one cohesive unit. That's what I'm talking about thinking of this as like an edge piece when we're putting it together in the proper color uh, combination. Now what's neat about this, when your polarity is correct, and it will be if you followed this, the magnets within the QB pieces will hold this little cohesive group together. So it really helps later on as reassembling the cube. Now when reassembling, I like to start with the edge piece in each little color group here. So first I'll start with the edge piece, then I'll move along to the left wing and I'll get those two colors correct, and then I'll move along to the right wing and I'll get those two colors correct, and then I'll just group them together and then I'll set the little trio, it will hold itself together, I set that to the side. And you end up with 12 of these color matching trios. Next we do the corner pieces. I'll show the chart again so you can have it handy. It's very easy to put the corner pieces together. Now a caution, a little word of caution, they're real small little pieces, these little tabs that fit in together. I mean they go together easily but it might be a little bit frustrating if they're just not perfectly aligned up so take your time. I don't know how fragile they are. I haven't had any break on me but uh, don't be too rough with it. Be gentle. If it doesn't feel like it's fitting right, really look at what's going on. Make sure that the tabs are fitting into each other. We have the three corner piece thirds and they fit together on the stock to form a complete corner piece. You'll have eight of these. Now you see the progress of the cube that we're at now. Here I've paired everything up. I've put the edges and the corner pieces and the wings and everything together and I'm showing the remaining part of my core where I've taped the center parts together. 
Now it's just a matter of taking that little trio, that edge piece with the two wings, and sliding it into position, then dropping the corner pieces down, and then building the cube from bottom up. And I'll be sure to remove the tape that I have holding the inner 3x3 together. The cube's complete and I really like it, but I'm a newbie at 5x5, five five, so I contacted KS Cuber and he's agreed to help me out with this project. I'm gonna box this up and I'm gonna ship it off to him and he's gonna reset it up, lubricate it, set the tensions to his desiring, and he's gonna show us some demo solves and let us know what he thinks about it. Hey, I'm KS Cuber, and over the last few days, I've been doing some testing on the Qi Wushuang, which is magnetized by DM Cubing. I started by doing some setup and lubing. I first lubed the hardware and core with Traxxas 30K, though this is really not overly necessary due to the lack of contact between the core and center pieces. Next, I added a small line of 30K on the internal mechanism in a circular pattern to ensure fairly even coverage throughout the cube. I finished the open heart setup by adding a few drops of lubical silk to give that super smooth and fast feel that silk adds. After this initial setup, reassembling the puzzle, adding a bit of DNM37 to the inner layers just to add even more speed, and breaking in the lube with around 60 solves, it turns absolutely great. The magnets work exactly as expected, fairly subtle, but adding enough of a click to each turn and move to make the solve experience excellent. In my solves I've done so far, I've broken every one of my 5x5 PBs by a fairly significant margin. A bit more about the exact turning qualities of this puzzle, the turning is exactly what you expect from a well set up Qi Wushuang. One and a half piece corner cutting and a bit of reverse, really more than enough on 5x5 and lockups very rarely occur in this puzzle. The outer layers are still a bit faster than the inner layers which makes for an excellent 3x3 stage and the inner layers are still very fast and smooth making for a really great centers and edges step. Also due to this difference in speed, 3x3 OLLs and PLLs that use M moves can be executed nearly as well as on a 3x3. The slices stay together much better than a non-magnetic 5x5. I have both a stock Wushuang and a Qizang S, the budget equivalent, and this blows both of those out of the water, definitely surpassing their already great performance. One last thing before I wrap this up, the stock Wushuang is a very light 5x5 compared to others on the market, and I actually really enjoy the added weight and perceived solidity difference I noticed in the magnetic variant. It feels very noticeably weightier and more solid than the stock Wushuang, mainly due to the additional weight of the magnets. Okay, well that's about all I have. Thank you so much to DM Cubing for the opportunity to test out this cube and to be a part of one of his amazing videos. Chaos Cuber out. Goodbye. <laughs>so much ks cuber i really appreciate your help here you did an awesome job and it's really good having your insight and your input on this project and and again i, I really thank you for that uh kudos to you everybody check out ks cuber's channel he's, he's got a great channel there and he's got a huge collection of cubes okay guys well that's the tutorial if you have any questions leave them in the comments if you have findings of, of magnets that you've used in this cube or other five by fives let me know put those down in the comments because each of us will learn more from what we all experience and we share that together so i hope this has been helpful see you guys the next time happy cubing bye